Hello, how you doing? This is Stand Up World episode 10. 10. And uh, thanks a lot for listening, for joining us again, for all you guys that have been out there following it. And you folks, really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know. You know, I got a lot going on. I'm doing some stand up sets again. I'm at the Laugh Factory this week. And uh, I, I, for those of you who haven't seen my act, I do it a little bit different. And I go up and I say, look, I haven't been doing this for a while. So I'm going to be giving you some facts about my life, a little backstory. You know, who I am, my wife, my kids, my upbringing. And then we're going to break you into smaller discussion groups and you'll download the information I've given you even further and then you'll come back and as a whole audience you'll vote whether or not to have me put to sleep it's a little different type of stand-up routine than you've seen it's a little more interactive but so far I have not been killed so it's going well that's that's with this type of act the only way you can really judge that is the fact that you're still alive there, Confucius had a great saying. He said, everybody has two lives to live. And the second life starts the day you realize you only have one. And by the way, that same thing applies to me and my underwear when I travel. I have one pair a day, and if something goes wrong, I'm immediately in a life not worth living. So that might be... Uh, that might be something if I said on stage I would get voted down closer to being killed. So, I don't know. Uh, what else can I tell you? I'm 64, as a lot of you know, but if you saw me in person, you would know I have the body of a 63 and a half year old. So, 64 is the new 63 and a half. And uh, remember that song? Will you still need me? Will you still read me? When I'm 64. I used to think, when I was a kid, I used to listen to that song, and I would think, man, that song's so full of it. I mean, anyone 64, if, if they're still alive, they're not, they're barely talking. They're not singing. They're not singing to their spouse. It just seemed unreal. And now here I am, 64, feeling great. Fuck that Fab Four. Those guys. I remember when I was a kid, I used to listen to that song. Sadly, show you what a little little pussy I was. <laughs> Sit in the backyard and listen to my portable record player with my Beatles lunchbox. There's another vote that would get me off the island right there. Yeah, he's just goddamn. He had a Beatles lunchbox. We got to put him out of his misery. Do him a favor. But I did. That was that was an early phase of my life. Then I became a stoner really young at about 14. Just started smoking a lot of pot. I started smoking and drinking really young. But I have 38 years sober now. And I... Uh, I quit. I, I would quit drinking. Here's what kind of drunk I was. I would quit drinking, and four or five days later, people go, "Are you you really quit drinking? Because you smell like booze." And then, after a while, some old guy in AA gave me a great tip. He said, "Mike, when we quit drinking, we change our shirt." So, I love to smoke pot. I remember I got into Cheech and Chong when I was a kid, and I thought, "This is." This is the marijuana instruction manual. This is great. I love this stuff. I told my dad, I said, I'm quitting piano. I'm quitting tuba. I'm quitting everything. I found something I'm going to master. I didn't tell him it was rolling joints. I love to smoke pot. But we called it pot. That was pot and dope and ganja. Everything was different. We had dealers, pot dealers. They sold us lids. 
Now it's just weed, bud. And you, it's weed, and you go to the store and you just buy it, like as if it were Kleenex or something. And it's strong as hell. It's, all, it's just a bud. You know, it's a clump of THC, all hard with red vines. It looks like a gnarled up little pug's penis. -y. It looks almost nuclear, you know, and you can like, like, look some kind of alien version of a nuclear weapon, and you can smell it in the parking lot of the weed store. The weed today is so strong, technically, it's an anesthetic. They can do surgery on you when you're on that stuff, and you won't know. Really, dude? You took out a lung? Wow, that's crazy. Can you imagine if I had hit that bong three times? Man, in the old days, we didn't even bother with bongs or we just when I started smoking pot, you just rolled joints. And it was hard work. You had to deceit it. You had to pull out twigs the size of your arm, you know, but and you got really good at it. If you you know, you could you really, you know, you, you roll it and then you put it in your mouth and you, you know, and just like and if you got really good at rolling joints, you could get laid. Hey, you want to fuck? You might as well. You're smoking my saliva. If I stop there. Then we all got into pipes. We made our own pipes. Pipes out of apples, pipes out of beer cans, pipes out of old hiking boots. Anything that had a front or a back or a top or a bottom, we would just turn into a pipe. I had a friend. He made a pipe out of his grandfather who had died fake leg. It was the grossest thing to smoke out of. But man, it hit so hard. You put it on there like a mask. And just it was it was unbelievable. We'd get so high. Today they have these crazy modern delivery techniques for marijuana. Electronic pens, smokeless bongs, vaporizers, computer powered smoking masks. It's gotten so technical like everything else in the world, you know? Gummy bears. Weed laced enemas. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know why you'd bother with the wind in a bick when you can just shove the stuff up your ass. Just, let's just go for it. The funny thing is, no matter what the technology or delivery system of today, the stoner still sounds like a stoner from the 60s. Sounds like one of the fabulous furry freak brothers. Whoa, dude. Oh, wow. Heavy. This shit is heavy. Oh, my God, Janis Joplin. I don't even know who Janis Joplin is, and I'm just saying her name, Janis Joplin. Oh, man, I'm... Whoa, this pipe isn't even plugged into the Wi-Fi or the UBSC, and I'm like, dude. That's my version of a stoner. I've been sober a long time, so it's all through memory. Bear with me. That's it. Keep smoking. Have fun. Just don't drive, walk, talk, or breathe, because that shit is too strong to do any of that stuff after you started with it. What else is going on? What else is going on? I just Oh, you know what? I, I, I had that Che Leno clip from the old days last week and I thought okay I'm going to play a little David a little ancient David Letterman from the early days here's David Letterman back in town and uh, my car is still not functioning properly so I got a hitchhike and stuff took it in a week and a half ago for a minor tune up 35 bucks and the guy says to me what they always say he says uh, is there a telephone number where we can get a hold of you later today you know if we find anything else wrong with the car Invariably, they find something else wrong with the car. Two, day, two days later, the guy calls up and he says, uh, Yeah, Mr. Letterman? <laughs> oh, uh, listen, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we was resetting the buttons on your radio and, uh, <laughs> yeah, your damn engine exploded. <laughs> Tore it up pretty bad, killed one of our boys. Now, let's see, that'll be a little more than... Those two guys were amazing. It's so funny to think that they, they were such good friends at one point because they really were. And Letter, Letterman was such a, such a such a big fan of Jay's, you know? And I remember when, I don't know what happened. 
because I knew them both pretty well around the store, you know. And I just remember when Letterman got his show, his first show, like the late night, actually it was his second show, the late night show. For like two years, Leno couldn't get on. And he, you know, he never really scored great with Johnny Carson at that point. You know, this when he went on the Tonight Show, he would put on a suit and a tie, and that wasn't Jay. Jay was a blue jean shirt, blue jeans, and a big belt buckle guy, and he was just a loose guy. And he didn't score big with Carson. And I remember for like the first two years, Letterman was putting on a lot of his really good friends and a lot of the comedy store guys, and he didn't put Jay on. And it really hurt Jay's feeling. Jay was so bummed about it. And the funny thing is, he had this Rolling Stone cover, and David was like the first guy any of us knew that had a rolling was on the cover of Rolling Stone, which used to be a really big deal. And as they were interviewing him, there was like this long of a passage about how great he thought Leno was and how cool he thought Leno was and how how much he learned watching Leno. You can go find that old Rolling Stone interview. But sure enough, like a week after it came out, Jay got the call and offered to go be on Letterman. So I always thought, well, Letterman read that and went, what am I doing? What am I doing holding this guy back? And he went out there and he came out and his first time on Letterman, he was in the blue jeans and the belt buckle and the, and he was great. He just killed. I never flew Pittsburgh to Los Angeles. This was the worst airline flight. I anyway, you, you enjoyed your flight. Well, you know what it is? It <laughs> makes these stops. And not it's not even like regular stops. It's so like the pilot can show the plane to his friends, you know that kind of <laughs> um, just old Jay. Vintage Jay. And then I think the next time he came out, he actually drove a motorcycle on stage. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he kept doing them. He got a, a Showtime special. I think it was called the American Comedian or something like that. But they let him host The Tonight Show one night. All of a sudden, The Tonight Show liked him. Someone at NBC said, hey, this guy's young and hip. And I think Right there is when the rivalry started. I think he was doing really good and putting so much energy into hosting The Tonight Show. I don't think it sat well with David or I don't know, something. But they were good friends. And they were the, they were the standouts. In my day at the stand, I, they were like a couple grades above me at the comedy store. But they were... Even as unknowns, they were the two best. They were the two best. And the thing about Leno is Leno really worked on his act. He always had new material. He was always working on new material. And Letterman didn't. Letterman, he was more of a mess with the audience guy. He really, he had a few good jokes, but not a lot of them. And they didn't change. <laughs> He did them over and over again for a long time, but he didn't go on the road. And, you know, he didn't really do stand up sets on anything. But he was great. Here's another little clip. So, anyway, what I got to do, I, for instance, I had to hitchhike over here this evening, and uh, this guy stops and picks me up. He's driving an old beat up Dodge with a bent frame. You know, they kind of go down the freeway at, a, at an angle like that. And... <laughs> The windshield on the right-hand side of the car is missing. It's just gone, busted out. And the back seat is on fire. Well, <laughs> right away, I'm apprehensive about getting in, you know? The, the guy driving the car is wearing a cowboy hat and a hospital gown, see? So. <laughs> and uh, he's rolling. The thing that bothers me most of all about him, he's rolling the biggest joint I'd ever seen in my entire life. He was using Pampers and... Uh, <laughs> Now, Letterman's a good guy. He's he's surly. He's uh, you can piss him off really easily. I think. I think, and I think he was always that way. He's just a grouchy guy, but he's got a big heart, and he's a good man, and he's a fucking genius. 
but he was always a little grouchy. But then I think just being David Letterman for so long made makes it even easier to piss him off if he doesn't if you do anything wrong. And I pissed him off a few times in my life, but he's been really good to me too. So I'll say that. Oh, I wanted to talk today also a little bit about more about Shane Gillis and that show, the 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 Gillian Keeves, the sketch show that he does, which to me is the best thing on YouTube. And I'm going to do a whole piece on him on Stand Up World. I'm just, I've been lazy lately. I don't know what the hell's going on. I've been doing some other stuff, finishing a screenplay. But I'm going to, I want to, when I do the piece, I want to do it right. But I got to tell you, please go on YouTube and check Gilly and Keeves out. It's ten dollars now. the The second season is out, and they did it very smart. They did a, they did like a special and they a live special, and they had an audience there, and they showed the audience the new sketches. But the first season is up free on YouTube, and there's some fantastic sketches that he plays a blind guy at a wedding that I love, and of course everybody loves the Trump speed dating, and this high school. Uh, coach scene is really great i mean they're they're so good at what they do and they spend the money they're not cheap little internet web shows these are done really really well i i I heard how much they're spending on each season i couldn't believe it but i think it just comes out of the money that shane makes as a stand-up comic on the road he's a really special guy he really is he's very very talented All right, and before I go, let's hear a word from, oh, sorry, not from, because it's me doing it, about our sponsor, Foundation Cigars. Hey, so I want to remind you again about Foundation Cigars, our sponsor. They're just fantastic. That's what I'm just smoking here. This is their new line, the Olmec, which is um, basically something to do with the first people to ever smoke cigars. I don't know. My buddy Nick Melillo. 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 I'm, hey, I'm a stoner all of a sudden. Nick is the owner and creator of Foundation Cigars, and he's also a genius. Pretty great. He makes these wonderful cigars. So go to Foundation Cigar Company. Something like that. I don't know. Here. Here's the website right there boom foundation cigars and um here the other thing i love is the tabernacle and they have a new line out now so go to their website they'll tell you all about it and smoke these if you ever see joe rogan smoking cigars on the show those are nikki's cigars those are foundation cigars they're truly padron level just at a great price too so ask your ask your cigar store dealer about them or go to their website or you can go to famous smokes or there's a lot of websites that sell them but they're really it's if you love a good cigar you cannot beat foundation cigars thanks okay that's episode 10 wow Can you imagine what it's going to be like when there's 20 episodes? Can you imagine the thunderous effect on society? We keep on keeping on. We're doing it. And you're helping. So thanks. So if you could just comment on Apple or Spotify, watch it on standupworld.com or standupworld.substack.com. Share it to your friends. Talk about it. Help me grow it. Because I want to do more and tell more. I'm going to start interviews real soon. And um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Stand Up World. Available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are peddled. Have a great week. God bless you. I love you. Thank you.